Welcome to Behind the VR Headset. Today we have a game developer, his name is Jordi. And Jordi is developing the game called Horrors of Space, which is out on the 30th of September. How are you doing, Jordi? Yeah. Great. How are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you, mate. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, I think <laughs> <laughs> I came across your game and I contacted you because I thought it looked really cool. And mm. um, you're kind enough to give me a key, so thank you very much. Yeah, and you're welcome. <laughs> I tried the game out. Uh, it's really cool. I really enjoyed it. So I did a solo play and then we did a co-op mm -hmm. as well. So I streamed them both. So yeah. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, what do you do? Where, where are you from? I'm from Barcelona and I come from the uh, movie editing and video editing world. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and how long have you been doing that? A few years or? What? How Sorry? long have you been doing doing that for? Uh, for ten years, I think, since I ended studying it. Yeah. And yeah, I've been quite busy doing movie. Well, I did two two movies now. Yeah. One's pending release, but okay. But yeah, two movies and a lot of other smaller projects. Cool. So, how did you how did you get into gaming? How did you get into gaming? What was your first time playing? Uh, what video game was the first one you ever played? Well, I started when I was, well, when most of us, well, when I was a child. I was was very, always very fascinated by the, by the interactivity of video games. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a Super Nintendo back in the day. I that remember was my those. first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I played Mario and I also had a Mega Drive and played Sonic. Sonic and Mario were my first experiences in video games. Oh, cool. Yeah, I had the full, oh, I'm quite old, the Spectrum, the ZX Spectrum. Spectrum do you remember? I don't know if that's. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I've never tried that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. older. So that was just like lines. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was, it was great at the time, obviously. And then it was like the NES. And then later on was the Master Master System Sega Master System. I remember that. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not really. I'm a dinosaur. I'm very old. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So what what about VR? How did you get into VR? What was your first experience? Did you got your friends' a house, or did well, you? Well, no. My first experience actually was in one of those um, VR like shops that you can go and play for a while. Oh, cool. Okay. There are some of those here in Barcelona, and I went and I tried. A co -op. I went with a friend and I tried, uh, I think it was an Ass Ass Assassin's Creed co-op thing, mm -hmm. like an escape room, virtual escape room. Right. Okay. It was really cool. That was my first experience in VR I was, and it was really, really cool. Nice. And then what, what headset was that on? I think it wasn't on a Rift S. Yeah. It was, right, okay. yeah. And it's really cool. What was your next move did you wait a few months or did you just go out and buy it uh, uh, straight away did you get that get a... yeah no i because they were back in the day they were quite expensive still yeah. and as soon as the rift the, no the the oculus quest 2 mm -hmm. went out was i mean it still is very affordable and i just got one and i started like trying out stuff oh and okay then... yeah so you've only been in vr for couple of years maybe for a few years yeah yeah oh nice so when you got the quest 2 what was the the first games that you experienced what was it that you uh before you bought it you obviously knew there's a few games you want to try what was the first thing yeah you played the well one of the first one was the beat saber one it's great it's a great experience and also i got uh half-life alex oh so yeah, yeah a great experience did you did you go straight from Quest Two and plug it into your PC? Is that what you did? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> that yeah. was my my goal with it because I knew it's a little bit more limited running it without a PC, and I wanted to try it. Yeah, I tried like plugging it in and and trying out some some VR games on PC straight away. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I've got. Um... Half Life Alex, obviously, uh, I've played it, yeah. and completed it. I haven't done them any real, real mods, maybe one or two levels. Hmm. Beat Saber, I got with this this headset recently, but I haven't put it on yet. I did a demo ages ago, but but yeah, I haven't. I still haven't played Beat Saber properly. 
So I have it. I have it, a copy of it. Sorry. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. very, very satisfying. The 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 effect of cutting up the, the scores and stuff with the music. Yeah, it's great. Do you, do you play that daily, or is it like a daily workout, or? No, not really. It started when I when I started playing. I was like, oh, I could do this every day and stuff. But in time, it gets like a little bit repetitive and stuff. But mm -hmm. you know, from time to time, I just plug it in and play for a while. Fun good fun yeah i see a lot of people loads of people. i think it's the most popular game in vr isn't it it's yeah it's one of the most yeah like especially lot with the quest 2 then i think maybe rec room as well uh maybe uh, yeah those yeah i tried those ones as well yeah walkabout mini golf is very popular i don't i think everyone's got that game that's you ever played mm. that no i don't think so yeah, it's just playing golf with friends, like mini golf, but it's really entertaining. You wouldn't think it, yeah. but it, it's really entertaining. It's pretty funny <laughs> as well. Yeah, we, cool. yeah, we can. Uh, we should play sometime. We should play sometime. Yeah, we could try it. Yeah. So, tell us about Horrors of Space. Yeah. What is the game about? Uh, the game is about uh, for well, it's about a ship that goes out into the yeah, out in space and starts. Mm -hmm exploring planets My, the idea of the story is that uh in the future we start looking for other planets to live in because earth we, we screwed up like we yeah. <laughs> like we are <laughs> and and yeah they, they sent like a few ships mm -hmm. mm, trying to find other planet livable planets to to colonize and yeah. this ship comes across this this planet and uh a creature boards the ship and starts killing people. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. And um, where did the where did the idea from the game come from? What was the inspirations, like the alien movies, or like what what made you think of right? I'm going to make this game, and this is what it's going to be about. Yeah, I've always liked the survival type games, like Outlast, like. Uh, Dead by Daylight is, is also a close one and Alien Isolation, as you said. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make, to replicate those, th that feeling of stress and fear mm -hmm. and make it multiplayer as well. So your game was inspired by the Alien movies, Dead by Daylight and Outlast as well, right? You were saying? Yeah. I that was the idea. Yeah, I haven't played Outlast. I've seen people play Dead by Daylight. My friends stream on Twitch, so yeah. I, I checked that out as well. And uh, mm. did you play any Alien games? Did you play like the Mother VR mod? Uh, the, the Alien Isolation mod? Yeah. You mean the... Yeah, I tried it. Yeah. But it wasn't... I mean, it wasn't a mod. It wasn't a complete VR experience. That's why I wanted to take that even further. Right. Okay, so that was like an inspiration. Is that... When you thought like of the a, actual, yeah. more like a desire, I wanted to to make that really happen somehow, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. My own way, but yeah. No, no, that's that's totally understandable. I mean, so you you played that, and then you thought maybe is that where the idea came from? Like I can do the same thing, but like obviously your own way, but from the made from the ground up to VR. Yeah. Yeah. And I was uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, carry on. No, no, nothing. That yeah, that was the idea from okay. the start to <laughs> yeah. to make it to make it play playable both in VR and also in flat screen as well. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I only found out the other day that you can actually play that on PC as well. Yeah. <laughs> so that's see that's really cool because not everyone has VR and then you can mix it up. Non VR friends can play. Mm. Uh, it makes yeah, no problem. Yeah, and and then on top of that. Obviously, more people have access to the game, and then you can sell more copies, which is always good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been developing the game for? Well, it's been in development for around three years now. Yeah. A little less than three years, but yeah, it's been it's it's been hard because I had to to combine my usual work, and mm -hmm. when I had some free time, just go back and. I keep developing it and that's why it took so long it shouldn't have taken so long but <laughs> <laughs> but you, life you, got in the way <laughs> yeah i mean it's amazing what you've done like the game is really i, I do really like the game i'm not just saying that because i've done yeah, it, thanks I've, 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 we've done a, i've done a stream on my own and we did one together the other day 
and it's really well done. The first thing that stuck out for me was like the the atmosphere of the game and mm-hmm. the lighting like the steam coming through the grates and when the the space door opens and the steam around the edges um mm. just the general sound and like the ambience of the game was that the main thing for you that you wanted to get right is that the, the biggest thing for you yeah it's one of the the things that i took more the most time doing because i wanted it to really feel like a real place and yeah yeah make it make you feel the depth and the the atmosphere of it all was very important to me yeah because you do as soon as you you start playing it's like you're surrounded by you're in a spaceship and then you've got a great view outside Mm. and then the first thing i noticed was the the small little flickering lights and the sound effects and you know all those kind of things and it just immersifies you so much more into the game Mm. uh, as opposed to just the game that has standard sounds and just normal lighting uh but that it makes it more scary as well when when you're going through yeah. those dark corridors and there's like light flickering and then the the monster can appear literally in, <laughs> anywhere right yeah <laughs> it's it's really cool because you've got like the the tablet right and it's got yeah. a radar and it tells you when the the monster is nearby close yeah, yeah. And it beeps more and more the closer it gets, and yeah. then and then there's multiple floors, right? So if it's above you, it will actually tell you that on the map as well. Yeah. And there's several. I think there's six other six players at the moment, isn't there? Six different players. Yeah, six different characters. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us more about their abilities? Because everyone's got their own special abilities, and also little subcategories of abilities as well. So do you want to go through? The, each of them and just tell us more about how they work okay yeah there's the anthropologist okay. that has a hand device that that makes uh makes a, a sound so that the creature gets um, stunned gets um, spooked mm-hmm. and you can run run okay. from it because it's the only thing you can do and you can't kill it it's one of the things you just can stun it for some time and it, it yeah. will get mad and come running back at you so Okay. And then you have the commander that has the cloak, which you used a lot. <laughs> yes, my favorite. Very useful because yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just hide and hide in a corner and watch it just go by. And what else? The soldier as well mm-hmm. has the um, the gun, the ray gun. Yep. You can shoot at it and stun it for some time as well. Then the security guard has night vision, but you can also see through walls. You can see the the position of the creature through the wall and other other teammates as well. You can see it all. To like warn them when where when it's closed or something. That's and then the doctor mm-hmm. that has a, um, a hand device that can heal others and herself as well. Okay. It's very useful to when you can find something to to heal yourself. You can just use that. Mm-hmm. And what else? What else? The the engineer, which you also tried, which has the um, she has a like a tracker. You can track the status the the status of the of the workstations and see the location of the um, of the key cards, which are is also very useful to unlock the the workstation areas. I yeah, think that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, each six. One, yeah, each one has it's so unique their abilities because, like the one you just mentioned, we tried out. I tried out for the first time yesterday, and it is really mm. handy because it there's ba- the basis of the game is there's key cards hidden around, and you need to find them, unlock the door, and then hack the computer. Now they're all randomly scattered around, but with with her, it's got like a it tells you the distance, how far you are from it, and then when you get close yeah. to it, you can see exactly where it is. Mm-hmm. And then the, the cloaking one is so cool because you can just go invisible, so it's like being in the Predator movie, and you just yeah. like, it's like that. And I was when I first did it, I was looking at my hands, I was like, that's so cool. It's like you're actually the Predator from from the from the movie. <laughs> it was so cool, and like it just it, like it's going crazy. The the creature's going crazy, and it just walks that goes past you when it should normally see you yeah um i mean Very cool. I, I use that that device as well the sound device uh you use the ray gun right yes yeah. so one of the characters has the ray gun as well 
it's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, so it's so cool that everybody plays their own different part and you've got to be tactical and who decides to be what player. Yeah, and you can combine them to to keep keep on going. Yeah, and it's... And stay alive. <laughs> yeah, the, the, but you've got to stay alive, obviously. And uh, <laughs> you can, <laughs> it's four players, not easy, it? though. You try yeah. it and it's not that easy. <laughs> no, we both tried it together and it wasn't easy. Yeah. <laughs> he made the game. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's it's so it was it's great fun, it's really good uh, good fun. So solo was really freaky because I was on my own obviously, and I had chat, but it wasn't it was just on my wrist. Yeah. Two player, it got a lot more fun because funny stuff happens when, when you're with other people, right? <laughs> and you can you can actually craft things. So you run around the ship and you scavenge stuff. You got an inventory, right? Yeah. And then you get different different bits and pieces, and you can make. So many different things like a medical injector, there's adrenaline. Uh, what, what else have you implemented in the game? Yeah, there's also a flashbang. Yep. And you throw it and it, it blows up in three seconds. And if the creature's close, mm -hmm. it, uh, it stuns it for a little bit. Yeah. Also a flash mine, which is, we, we have, I don't think we've tried it, but it's like, uh, it's like a flashbang, but you can just throw it. Mm -hmm. And only when the creature's close, it, it explodes. Oh, so cool. it's useful in another way. Yeah. It's a little different because you can just plant them around and mm -hmm. if it comes, you just make some seconds to run away. Yes. And also there's a smoke, a smoke bomb, mm -hmm. it just throws, uh, it explodes and scatters some smoke and the creature can't see and it slows it down for a little bit while it goes through the smoke. Yeah. And also a smoke mine, which works the same. When it's close, it, it blows up. And, yeah. you can, and the creature just has to go through it. And also the noise emitter. Yes. It just, yes. You, can, you throw it and it makes uh, a noise that stuns it, that makes the creature, it stuns it. And then it's, as long as it's close, in a, ra in a close radius, it, it works, works slower. It can't run when it's close, the a noise emitter. Oh, cool. Because what it does is it kind of it walks around the the ship right yeah it walks around the ship and then you can hear it and then when it gets closer you the, you know your tablet tells you as well mm -hmm. but then when it actually gets alerted to where you are he goes crazy right and he starts running after you and stuff like that so the aim of the yeah. game is to kind of slow it down slow slow the slow the creature down right yeah slow it down and make enough time so that you can uh, run away and and hide yeah. And yeah, lose it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like stealth and evasion, and then you got to do the hacking part as well. Yeah, it's really cool. Like the the different elements that you brought into the game. So like the different players, that makes a big difference. The characters, and then you have mm -hmm. to decide on who's going to have what items, like crafting wise. Who's going to yeah. have the who's going to use what items to slow it down. So there's a lot of stuff to take into consideration. Yeah. A lot of different things. Play it. Yeah, I mean, you can play it. You have to... Every player has a different... Every character has a different way of playing the game, Yeah, you could say. Yeah. You can combine them. What was your inspiration for the actual alien creature? Yeah, actually it was... I don't know if you well, if you remember the, 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 the typical Roswell aliens. Mm -hmm. The ones with the big head. Uh, Big round eyes which is very recognizable so i wanted to make a version of that a scary version of that that's why it's has the like the the, the head shape and the black eyes as well yeah. i wanted to make like a, a reference to that yeah make a scary and menacing version of it yeah it's very like it's like very intimidating especially when you're playing on your own because you can hear it <laughs> stumping around and then it screams and then, then it's looking for you and then like, I was hiding in the locker, and it just, it just, I wasn't expecting it. It just ripped the locker <laughs> open and just grabbed me. Yeah, <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Like, uh, the the AI of, of the alien is really well done as well. It's really yeah, well was, done. That, that was one of the toughest parts as well, because uh, if it, I wanted it to, to look like a real player was mm, playing as the creature. 
yeah. make it smart enough that it can look around where you were before and sometimes mm, open lockers and try and find you there. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. That, Ooh, that could be like an update where the player can be the be the alien. Yeah, I, th I thought about that. At, at the start, <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted a player to be the creature or make an AI, but I think uh, all the players being in the same side, it's more rewarding somehow. And I wanted to to make the creature really a, a menace. When you know it's it's a person made, sometimes you can like foresee what they're going to do, but if yeah. it's an AI and you... You you don't always know what's gonna happen. <laughs> and yeah. get a little crazy sometimes. Yeah, I think with the four players against the the the, the creature, that's that's great. I mean, you you could if you wanted to one day just say yeah, do it as an update, because at the moment it's it's coming out on the thirtieth of September in early yeah. access, right? Yeah. Yeah, in early access. Right. With the the different players, so this if you have four players, say and one of you dies, you actually end up in a different room. Do you want to explain how that works? And Yeah, you end up, the thing is, when you die, uh, it's permadeath, you can't come back. Mm -hmm. And you go to a spectator room where you can uh, open a computer, you can use a computer there, and and see the security cameras that are scattered around the ship in the minimap, and you can just switch between views and help your teammates which are still alive the ones that are remaining and help them through that you can see also the location of the um, of the key cards there mm -hmm. so you can tell them go left or right or it's under somewhere whatever yeah yeah that map looks really cool i i, I did die a couple of times and i was watching you it's really uh, something that i am looking forward to playing with three other players because i think that would just be so yeah. funny it'll be so funny with with the stealth mechanics, tell us a bit more how the, uh, how the stealth works. You know, so when you're standing and sprinting and crouching and the field of view of the creature. Yeah. So when you, the only way it can hear you is when you're crouching or mm -hmm. walk crouching. Yeah. And yeah, when you walk, it can hear you if if it's quite close or close under you as well. And if you run, it can hear you from very far away. Or like, yeah, it's um, like tweaking right now the difficulty level, so you it can't hear you from that far away because right now, as we experience, it's quite hard <laughs> to get away from it. But yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. That's one of the things I wanna do. That's why it's on early access and not. Yeah. It's not finished. There are many things I want. I have in mind for it, but. But yeah, one of the things is with player feedback, mm, just reach a, uh, an affordable, you could say, difficulty level. Mm -hmm. So players feel <clears throat> comfortable and not overwhelmed by it. Yeah, it, it was pretty pretty tough, but obviously you're, you're going to change that. That was easy mode, wasn't it? So um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to make that a bit easier. Because I thought it was just me when I was playing solo, but it's, it's still pretty challenging, like because there's so much stuff going on in the game at the yeah. same time you've really you've really got to be on on the ball mm. because when when that creature gets you it's pretty much game over right and it makes you jump. no actually not yeah. if you're running yeah. it it just like scratches you scratches you once and you get yeah. the the um, like hurt, mm, you get hurt once. Yeah, and you get one more chance. You can run away and like heal yourself and get back to the healed state, the normal state. You have one chance, you could say, hmm. and then if it catches you again, then yeah, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, because the and that's that's another thing. So you that's why you might need a medic if you're doing like multiplayer. Yeah, or you can craft medi kits, but then you have to find the bits and pieces for it. Yeah. And if it That's does, right. if it does swipe you, then it's it slows down for a second, and you just gotta keep running until it's. Kind yeah, of... that's your chance to keep running and and, yeah. and hide somewhere. And then you you said it yesterday that it it searches for where it last saw you as well. Once it goes off off alert, high alert, right? Yeah, once once your it loses you, you could say it 
it, it tries to find you around the area where you when you last um, were when it last saw you yeah yeah because i've i and remember a, yeah sorry yeah after uh after a few it, it looks around the, the that um, that spot and tries to find you behind behind um, and desks or chairs places you could be hiding yeah. and then after a few after a few tries it just goes back into patrolling mode yeah because when when i did play it the first time what i ended up doing is i was just cool i kept dying so then i just i was just crouched the whole time yeah <laughs> it was really slow to like get things done but i was i was successful i didn't know that with the sprinting it's only within a certain distance and running and things like that but when i played with yeah. you i got a much better understanding of the game yeah uh so there's there's a lot that went into it with the yes yeah, there's, there's know, a little learning curve you could say yeah yeah definitely <laughs> yeah there is there definitely is so in the game there's several different hacking puzzles i guess to do so while you're mm -hmm. hacking the computer there's a there's a time a bar that's filling up and then sometimes you have to stop and then do like a, a mini game yeah that's right but um tell us about the different mini games that are in in the game and what made you think about having the, the hacking mini games yeah there's a thing i mean when you're hacking you just mm -hmm. uh the first idea was just wait for the bar to fill up but it needed something else to keep you engaged yeah. So I came up with uh, the idea to to do some. Well, you've played some hacking games as well. You know, there yeah. are, these types of things are quite. Mm, I, I didn't invent anything, you could say, but I I came up with this few mini games that you have to do to mm -hmm. keep keep on going. If you fail, the thing is, if you fail, the uh, you trigger an alarm and the creature will come running towards you. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to be very careful with them. You have to be very, very concentrated and try to not be distracted by the fact that you're probably getting chased by it and it's coming to, towards you. <laughs> with all of that stress added, it, it's it makes it harder. But yeah, it's fun. There's a lot of so there's a lot of stress and there's pressure already, like you said. <laughs> the thing is with the the hacking, I. Hmm. I did say to you, I go, don't, I'm not going to, don't, don't put me in the hacking, I'll fail. And then after a couple of things, you said, oh, yeah, yeah, do it. And then the first thing I pressed, the alarm went off. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> so it's, it's different things, isn't it? Like um, different lines of code, you've got to, you've got to like, spot the difference kind of thing. Yeah, there's there's one that, that you have to spot a difference in the code. There's a line of like 16, 16 codes and you have to spot the, the one that has the wrong spelling or characters, you could say. Yeah, and there's another one with, where you have to stop. You have a list of numbers, and you have some numbers that are ticking up or down, and you have to stop them at the right time. And another one with a list of files as well, mm -hmm. and you have to sometimes order them, send them by name, by inverse, inverse alphabetical order, or or by date. You have to send them in different types yeah. of orders and the last one is which is the last one are uh, the one with the constellations there's a code with uh six constellations and you have to to enter the enter the same code mm -hmm. and press okay it's like a numpad but with constellations which which make it makes it really hard yeah as well yeah to see them so yeah that that's <laughs> that's the main one for me because when i first played it i thought I thought it was an alien language. I go, who made this language? <laughs> and then yesterday you told me that it was, there's actually constellations. Yeah. That, that, and also the yeah. passwords for the computers are also constellations or planets or mm -hmm. things like that. It's all, all very meta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, there's a lot of different mini games and then you have to get used to the constellations. It didn't take me long to get used to them. And then uh, you just got to put, put them... In order, yeah, you have a time limit. You have a yeah. time limit as well, so you have yeah. to to complete them in like it depends on which one, 30, 20 seconds. Yeah, and that's great as well because if you're playing in a team, 
if you if you screw up then everyone's going to be <laughs> everyone's going to be telling yeah. you off right it's so funny <laughs> or maybe you can use that you can use it as well if someone else is doing another workstation and the the creature is closed you can fail on purpose so that the creature Ooh. comes after you i never thought it's a tactic one. as well it can be used yeah everything can be used different in different ways yeah i never thought <laughs> that that's, that's actually a good one what's the different difficult levels i know at the moment you're tweaking them and stuff so between yeah. easy normal and hard what would be is it like with the creature, does it hear you from further away? Does it chase you for longer? Does it smell you? Because you said it's got smell as well, right? So it can smell you, even if you're not Yeah, moving. it can smell. If you're close and it smells you a few times, mm -hmm. it, it'll it start looking around because it knows you're nearby. So, yeah, that's one of the things. And, yeah, it's basically, yeah, the, the hearing distance is one of the big things, mm -hmm. big changes from difficulty levels. Because, yeah, in hard, it can hear you from very far away. Yeah, and as you lower it, you can you can run, being it closer, and it won't hear you as much. Uh, vision as well, the vision distance is also limited in easier modes. Right. Also, mini games, the mini game countdowns are shorter in in hard as as you go up. Yeah. What else? I actually have a list, but <laughs> yeah. from memory. And yeah, some other things, the battery as well, which is very important because your everything depends on your battery. And on easy modes, it depletes slow, more slowly. Yes. Yeah. So everything we did mention before, like the ray gun and the healing, the torches, the invisibility cloak, the night vision, all of that runs off a little battery, right? So yeah. you need to find those batteries scattered around. I've run out and not not notice so you'll be running around and not notice that you're using your ability or you, your torch is on when it shouldn't be and you run out of battery and then you're just like yeah that puts you into sticky situation yeah. uh, <laughs> the tough one so yeah the main thing is everything runs off the battery and then you've got uh limited slots as well in your you inventory have 10, 10 inventory slots yeah yeah so you have to yeah you can pick up items and then when you if you craft new ones you'll yeah. use up the slots oh yeah the other ones so if you combine items you have less you you can have more th useful things you could say yes and then because some of the, some of the things the chemicals and stuff you can you cannot use them unless uh unless it's combined to make uh, a smoke bomb or a flashbang or whatever right okay yeah uh, yeah i remember i did that because you've got a crafting menu on the left side you've got all your bits and then on the right it shows you everything that you can make and then it will go green mm. if you can craft it and you just click on it and then it will take a bit of time to craft and yeah. which is adds to the pressure of the game even though there's yeah. really loads of pressure <laughs> yeah everything <laughs> relies on time in this game that's why everything you have when you open a door it takes like four seconds when yeah. you whatever you do takes time yeah. so you have to play with that yeah yeah and then it it crafts and then it makes more space in your inventory the timing yeah. thing is really good, the time pressure, because it just adds so many different elements to the game, mm. especially with the pressure of the, the alien running around. Like We were hacking, and then you could hear him coming, and then you have to just stop hacking, and then you have to come back to it, then you have to stop, then it comes to look for you, then you have to hide. Oh, there's so much going on in that yeah. game. <laughs> it's it's crazy. With, with multiplayer, with four yeah. players, I, I, there's so many hours of... Yeah of fun you can have in that game yeah with the future of the game like future updates and future content what is it what's on your wish list of what you'd like to add to the game yeah first of all i want to uh as you uh, as i said before i wanted to tweak it and make it comfortable and and afford yeah comfortable for people to play mm -hmm. and yeah have a list of of things like, uh, sh I, I, I mean, I want to do uh, more ships if possible. Ooh, okay. I want to, I, I want to add more characters as well with different uh, new abilities. Also, maybe new creatures as well. Yeah. That those are the ideas for expanding it in time. Oh, nice! And then you've got to so add add more more and more more hours of different things you can do with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's great because with early access as well you've got 
the time, all that time before like the the main release to add everything that you want to do, yeah. get all the feedback as well. So mm. you can add different ships. Like, have you thought of maybe I don't know, like an alien ship that you can do that that we're. It's not but for now. Yeah. Since the idea is that that we launch from Earth, we launch several ships. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to make different kinds of of ships with different layouts so yeah. that they play differently. That was my main. Yeah. Not alien ships are not on the on my mindset. They're not right in the now, world. At least. Yeah, 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 yes. Okay, no, no, I get that. I get that. What is your ETA on a full release? Of the game do you have a year planned or a date or anything like that yeah i mean the the, the ideas were uh, was for to stay in early access for like a year year and a half mm-hmm. so that i can tweak it uh, make it comfortable for people to play and then expand it a little bit more before release right okay but that's about the plan a year year and a half yeah that's the plan yeah so then you can just basically people can play it give you feedback and you can tweet the game yeah also you're right seeing what people want if they want if people want more ships yeah then i'll make more ships and if they want new characters then and yeah and and adapt to what people want yeah from, from the yeah. game yeah because a lot of devs don't do that but like i've i've been involved in a game called rfvr and the developers of that just listen to everything and every, all the, the whole community on discord just goes yeah do this do, you know maybe do this maybe do this and they're just like all right they, they'll think about it for about five seconds and be like yeah we can do that and they'll just do it and it's so cool yeah that's great yeah that the community get in, gets involved because it just makes a like um it builds a really strong community and then the buzz for the game builds and the relationship mm. between the developer and, and the community is like it's really important i think especially being like an independent developer because it's just you developing the game right yeah it's just me yeah just you <laughs> and you know doing that and just getting involved with the community is 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 so cool because it's, yeah, it's very important big. once they're triple a and big and stuff like that they sometimes they take ideas from their previous if they've got a sequel you know maybe do this because people wanted this yeah one. but as you're making the game it's so cool for you to be suggested something you implement it and then mm. someone would be like oh my god there's my idea in a game in vr yeah yeah that's yeah it's the idea to get get the people involved and yeah. listen to what mm, the community has to say yeah. and implement things that make them want to keep playing the game which is the goal to make people have fun and and enjoy it yes it is really fun i've got to say it's really fun. It's it's really it's so well done. Like I, I said before, the atmosphere and all the mini games and the crafting and the different characters all rolled into together. It's really well done. Like you've you've put together loads of different aspects of the game, and, you've, and it's it's really cool. I'm not just saying that. I actually I streamed <laughs> it. People watched it. I'm and getting a lot of compliments today. <laughs> Thank you. So I yeah no because I, I streamed it and everyone's like wow this is cool. I put it on my wish list. I'm going to get this and it's like it's something different and it's something everybody wants like something like that mother vr mod but with multiplayer right yeah yeah that's so, it yeah, yeah and, and it's one of the things i it's I'm, i made the game i wanted to play so somehow i'm happy that other people want want to play it too <laughs> yes that's the same that's... with uh, most of the, well most of the devs i know is they're making a game that they want to play yeah. And it's not like somebody telling you make this game it's like i want this game and this is how i want it to be and then you build it and then after that you just listen to the community and you can add things you can take things away which, yeah. is, which is the cool thing about being an independent developer mm-hmm. somebody asked me if there is going to be like i know it's on pc and like at the moment in vr would you ever mm-hmm. consider doing a quest 2 port like so then you just if you were to just make the graphics lower and in, you know how people just poured it over to quest two is that something yeah. that you thought about yeah i thought about it but it's one of those things that i don't know how how it's gonna run until i try to run it there right. so because it's it's a very it's a quite uh cpu ex, uh cpu expensive game mm-hmm. So a lot of the 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 gameplay relies on the CPU, the AI, the everything that goes on, and I don't know if the the Quest Two will be able to 
to run it. That's one. Of, that's the only thing because I would love it to be there, to be compatible with the Quest Two and be able to play it wherever. But yeah, it's it's something that it's, time time will tell. Yeah, yeah, I get that. The C, if it's but yeah, very CPU intensive. That would be a tough one to to solve. But you know, maybe for the future Quest Three, if yeah, it comes yeah. out next year. <laughs> yeah, you, you see that this is the thing because the VR is it started off kind of, obviously slower and then you got the early headsets then you got like the the rifts then you got the quest 2s and now you've got the new pico coming out and you've you've got yeah. all the other headsets it's kind of starting to speed up a little bit bit faster than it was before so you never know what the future is going to hold for standalone standalone VR right yeah that's right so you could you could potentially in the future do that What's the yeah? Hopefully, it'll be yeah powerful enough to run it to to run it as is almost. Yeah. I mean, it's normal that mm, I have to tweak some stuff for yeah. sure, but I would like it to look as good as it looks now. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing is, as a as a developer, it's your baby, right? And you've made it. Yeah. It looks awesome, and you've made it like this, that, and the other, and then you'd you'd obviously have to download it graphically and all the little things like the effects and stuff like that and then when, when you look at it you'd be like this isn't what i wanted <laughs> but, yeah and i don't want to do that i mean yeah. i want to make a make it appealing and and yeah. make it visually visually attractive i don't want to yeah. sacrifice that just to be on the quest too yeah honestly like all the effects and the everything that is going on in the game atmosphere wise that's what makes the game. That's the problem. That is what makes mm. the game. And if you were to say take away the smoke effects or the flickering lights or, you know, different things like that, I just don't think it would be the same game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But one day you just don't know because that would be great if it did come to, to mobile headsets because I'm, I'm sure loads of people would buy it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be great. Time will tell. Yes, indeed. <laughs> What's the minimum specs then on the PC version and the so PC first of all like desktop and then for VR. So for desktop, uh, I've tried it in uh, the minimum specs are uh, seven fifty Ti. Oh, okay. Or flat screen. Yeah. Yeah, you can run it at about around thirty FPS. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's minimum, minimum. Mm -hmm. And uh, for VR, I would uh, minimum would be a 1080, 1080 Ti to run it. Right. Okay. 1080 Ti. That's yeah. that's not too bad. I mean, that's kind of the average, right? 1080ish for VR. I mean, even yeah. people run stuff on the 970, and sometimes even less. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. If you if you lower the resolution a lot, maybe you can run. In a, I have a, nine, a 970 as well. Yeah. And it, I mean, it runs, but it doesn't run. <laughs> oh. yeah a 1080 for me would be the the minimum yeah. and uh, the what else the recommended settings for for pcr and 970 would be the recommended minimum mm -hmm. and uh for vr you have a like a 2060 or 2070 would be recommended depends on the headset because the resolutions change depending on the headset yeah but and yeah, on a, a 2070, 2060, you can run it perfectly on almost anything. Okay, cool. Because with headsets, you did... You have a Quest 2. That's what you built the game on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I tested it on. Yeah. Oh, nice. So anyone that's worried about that, it does work with the Quest 2, 100%. With the... Yeah, you just have to, 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 to use it through the, the PC. Yeah, so it, is it oh, yeah. running with Virtual Desktop and Air Link as well? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm actually running on Air Link most of the time. Yeah. Right now I'm yeah. running on Air Link. Oh, cool. So there you go, guys. You can just pretty much plug and play. And with, yeah. mul with, with multiplayer, if I was playing on a PC and you were playing on a VR, it, would it be as simple as anyone can join you? Because know? it's really easy. As soon as you go in the game, you go multiplayer, or there's a boxes in the corner and you can just click it and then add a friend it's as simple as that isn't yeah, it invite seamless. people yeah. yes yeah because that that's what was really that's really important about a game especially in early access is a multiplayer and that it runs mm -hmm. and that you can it's easy matchmaking 
So it's pretty yeah. pretty seamless. Exactly. Uh, we found each other really easily. So that was good. Mm -hmm. That was a really good laugh. <laughs> what headsets have you actually had? So you said you've just you got the Quest 2 and is that all you've ever tried? Like have you tried other headsets or the only thing the only other one I've tried is the the Rift S that time I told you and and that's it the Quest 2. I'm I'm looking forward to trying and other ones but I I did my research when I was mm, looking to buy my Quest 2 mm -hmm. and price per performance this was like the best deal at the time I think yeah. it's still it still is yeah. but but yeah I would like to try one of those with 4K screens that must must look great I mean if this already looks good I, I can't imagine how that's going to look in the future and the future Quest 3 and stuff I I wish mm, the screen gets better and the tracking and everything because it, it's all it's already great but i don't know how far yeah. they'll go with it yeah it's so exciting it's a really exciting time yeah to, to be in vr i had a ps first one was a psvr2 then a rift s then i got the quest 2 then i got the valve index then i got the quest 2 again oh wow <laughs> uh, so i've been for a few i bought the i bought the quest 2 again because i rebranded my channel because i think naturally i was working with indie developers and looking at indie games yeah. and playing indie games uh so i picked up a quest 2 again recently sold my ps5 which was for the psvr2 um but i think it's worth it because it's, it's it's paying off because a lot of people are liking the content i'm bringing out like your games and other games that i've mm -hmm. shown on my channel because without doing that nobody would have heard of them like you know it's really hard yeah that's right App Lab obviously is cut filled with it and side quests, but especially on Steam, it's very hard to get noticed because Steam is constantly going to be pushing the top games. You go to Steam VR, yeah. Except for when maybe the few days or whatever, a few weeks. How I'm not sure how it works after your game comes out. It's going to be there, but it's really yeah. hard to push these games. So that's why I thought I'd start my channel just for indie developers. Yeah, especially that indie indie games are really hard to find. Yeah, there are gems out there that you don't. You don't see anywhere. Yeah. So it's very important the, the work that you do and other other content creators yeah. because they get them out there and get them to, to other people. Yes, definitely. And with like my, I've got a background in, in sales and marketing. So eventually I'm going to start using, I'm going to start using that and go to different, I've got, a, I'm building a network of developers and then start doing the sales and marketing side of it. I'm just seeing mm -hmm. how it works at the moment and what figures people are getting. Like I speak to developers about wish lists and things like that. And then eventually I'll be able to myself be able to help indie developers with launching a game from start to finish kind of thing. Oh yeah, that's great. So that's, that's the yeah. plan. Over time, I've only just started, so I'm just like a little baby now in this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, step, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I really appreciate you, you know, giving me a key to the game and let me try it before before it comes out because that, that was great. I wasn't expecting it to be what it was when I first went in the atmosphere and that's the thing that stood out the most and mm. it's scary as well and jump scares because you see a trailer and it just doesn't do it justice, especially... That's the thing with VR, is unless you've been in a VR headset, you do you don't know what it is, right? You can do flat screen trailers or footage of yeah, any game. Yeah, it's really hard to convey the feeling of a game of a VR game in a flat screen. Yeah, and like things like you've got Live, which is really cool. It does show what it's like to be somebody in the game, but it's really oh. hard to sell to get people sold on VR unless it's some like where you went. You went to a place and you put the headset on. And you're like, oh my god. You know, people do not understand it until yeah. they're actually in it. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard. What would you say to any indie developers out there now or anybody thinking of making a game? What would you say to them? I mean, for me personally, mm -hmm. the thing that if you have the will to, to, to start, there are many resources out there, like YouTube videos that, that teach you the basics of developing in in unreal or unity and on, on, on other engines as well mm -hmm. and you just have to start and and start playing with it and eventually you can learn and make whatever you want with it yeah. there are many resources out there mm -hmm. that's what i would tell them just look for them and and just try yeah 
Yeah. I've, I've had a few people who are making games or they've bought games out and stuff like that. And it's very, very... I'll tell you what's the biggest thing that they say is, it's, it's Google and YouTube because you can learn yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You can find it all. It's all out there. It's not yeah. too, too look for it. Yeah, I, I'd never used a gaming PC before. I mean, like, I bought one and then I thought, okay, this is cool. I bought all the parts and I built built the gaming PC myself. And to a lot of people, that's that's easy. But for me, I just YouTube video and I just did it. I was like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. You can just, like yeah. 15, 20 years ago, you can do that as all books and you got to go somewhere, someone pay someone to build it. Yeah. yeah. So VR, We've come very far, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Especially for you, <laughs> since that the, the NES days, right? The Super Nintendo, yeah, games that. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Um, very different now. Yeah, my it, technology is just going so fast nowadays. I was just, yeah. um, I was just going to ask you quickly, what yeah. headset are you going to get next? What are you looking forward to the most? Well, actually, the the Quest Three is really, I mean, the idea of it, of yeah. the evolution of this one. It's, I mean, it, it sounds great. And also, I would like to see, because I've been looking around and trying to see what, what's out there, once, what's going to be out there. Yeah. And, well, it's not officially, but, but of course, Valve would, will release another headset at some point, and that one, yes. it, it should be <laughs> awesome. So I'm yeah. looking forward to an announcement and see to see what, what they're coming up with next. Yeah. Yeah, so they're doing it in Valve time. I've got an index, so it's like... People say, oh, yeah, the Pico's so coming out and it's going to have this and that. But you can't beat the controllers and the comfort and the sound. Like, That's you just can't, yeah. you can't beat it. So for now, I'm sticking to this and the quest for all the indie stuff. Mm-hmm. Where can where can people find you? So you have a Discord, right? Yeah, there's a Horses Face Discord. Mm-hmm. There's the Twitter account. Yep. You can follow, follow us there. And yeah, that's about it. Okay. Do you have a YouTube channel for the game? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. There's a YouTube channel with tra- the trailers and stuff. It's called Horse of Space. It's like that. You can find it on Google. Yeah. What I'll do is in the description, I'll link it all down below. So I'll link them. Click it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one thing I did say to you is I want to fill your Discord out with people because there's yeah. a lot of people on Twitter, and um, obviously a lot of people are interested in the game. So I'm gonna try and get as many people as I can into your Discord. And get, right. it, get it nice yeah it would be great up. to get once yeah the idea was once the game was out to to try to expand the the player base the yeah. the community on on discord as well yeah oh yeah that's great yeah let's yeah i'm looking forward to the release of the game it's uh friday the 30th of september and yeah. it's going to be priced 14.99 isn't it 14.99 yeah with yeah. a 15 percent discount the first week Yep, and that's fourteen ninety nine across the board. Euros, pounds, dollars, everything. Euros, um, pounds. It's a little, yeah, whatever the the trans the translation is. The, the amount is, yeah, yeah, I don't know what it is, but okay, fourteen ninety nine euros and dollars. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the release. I'm looking forward to playing with other people. Can you? It's just one last thing. Can you do? So just mm-hmm. someone can do an open lobby and you can search for open lobbies and you can just join anyone? Yeah, if you search if you uh, if you search on on the main menu, yeah. you you can get matched with other with other players that are, are trying to to find a game as well. So oh, even if you yeah. play two, yeah. you can find other another two players that are trying to find a game and you get put together and you can also chat. There's a chat and there's a voice voice chat as well, so you can up to them awesome that's great um thank you very much for coming on the show i really appreciate it i appreciate you giving me a key i appreciate <laughs> you streaming with me the other day as well i learned a lot it's from all right thank you for having me no listen this is what i'm this is what i'm doing is i want to promote indie games and with my sales skills as well i want to help you to get more people in the discord and with marketing and stuff like that so we can talk about that as well great yeah thanks that would be great awesome <laughs> Right, guys, so you see I've got a new studio here. I've got some other developers coming in the next few weeks. Uh, I've got some other content creators as well. So if you like the content, then subscribe. This is Behind the VR Headset. I've been Indie VR. And you have been... Jordy. Jordy. Cheers, guys. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.